It's a great Wednesday night up here in Boston and at WATD 95.9. Gary Levitt and friends, it's like every single Wednesday night, we have been able to bring you some of the greatest names in music, sports, and of course, Hollywood. Now, for the past two weeks, I've been promoting this young lady on social media. (laughs) And I'll tell you what, more so than any celebrity that I've ever promoted on social media. She doubled the closest to her as far as likes and comments. Why do you say that? Well, to me, one of the most beautiful women that ever played in Hollywood on stage. She's done it all. Movies, TV shows, and a lot of people forget she actually got her start as a singer. And I'm, of course, talking about the woman of many guys' dreams, from ages 5 to 95, the one and only Jeannie herself, Jeannie Nelson, as in Barbara Eden. Let's hear it for I Dream of Jeannie. Woo! Yeah. Right. Oh, dear. Wow, this is so well, cool. Thank you. I, w- I, I know you can't be here in the studios, but I wish I could blink you to be here in the studios with us. Oh, I'll bet you could. <laughs> Wait a sec, I'll give it a shot. Uh, it didn't work. It didn't, didn't work. Didn't work. Well, sometimes it, it doesn't. <laughs> Have to keep trying. I will. I will. And you just said something about keeping and trying. And you know what? You have been doing that since the very, very beginning. You started young as a singer. And I saw all the things that you've tried out for over the years. And it's incredible. And the word that I thought more so than anything else is that Barbara Eden is full of tenacity. <laughs> is that what it is? Well, well <laughs> I've looked at it. I've looked at it so many times that I couldn't tell what it was. I don't know. <laughs> and nice, thank you. A nice sense of humor to go along with it. Barbara, again, folks out there that are listening to us tonight, it's Barbara Eden, I Dream a Genie, and much more than that, longtime fan of the TV show, and all the different TV shows along the way that you were a special guest. And I'm going to go right to Mayberry, North Carolina, right away. And my favorite Uh episode of that particular show, when you were actually working for Floyd the Barber. I adored working with Andy Griffith and Don Knotts. I had the best time of almost anything I've done, to tell you the truth. And Um, you just made such an an impression on everybody in, in Mayberry. Well, that was that was cute, wasn't it? It's such a nice town. That's what she said. She <laughs> wanted to stay there. It's such a nice town. <laughs> uh, I remember that well, and I remember that line. And of course, you had the mayor getting the the manicure. Yeah. Everybody was lining up yeah. to get a manicure from you inside Floyd's yeah. barber shop. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, so cool. They were darling. They were, but they were all such good, good actors. It's uh, a pleasure to work with them. Uh, people who are, you know, in it. (laughs) Well, a lot of people out there that are listening in this evening weren't aware of the fact that one of your early gigs was with Johnny Carson. Oh, that was my one. of That was, I think, my first job in Hollywood. And that wasn't uh, that was live television. He was the he was uh, uh, replacing Red Skelton for the summer at CBS. Mm hmm. I think it was 13 shows, but I'm not sure. And um, my agent had said, uh, uh, he called me and said, there's a, you know, I'd been auditioning for everything and not getting a job. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, uh, I want you to go over to CBS, wear the dress. Well, I only had one sexy dress. <laughs> I knew what he was talking about. <laughs> so I put the dress on, but it was a cold day. And I put a very fuzzy, white, warm coat on. And um, I got to the parking lot of CBS, got out of the car, and it was cold, so I left the coat on. Walked into the building, and it was freezing. It was like a refrigerator. Left the coat on. Went up the elevator, went into the office, and the first thing they did was say, go go right in. The director's waiting for you. So I walked right in, and I couldn't take that coat off. You know, it looked like, (laughs) ta-da! So 
So I left the coat on and I didn't get the job. Oh. <laughs> so I was. I told my agent called me and said, well, how would you do, Barbara? It was for a dumb blonde, you know, and, and who, who could sing off key. And I, I said, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't get it. But uh, Wilt, it was his name. And I said, I, didn't, I couldn't take my coat off. And I told him what happened. So the <laughs> next week, he called me and said, look, they're having another casting call. Wear the dress. Don't take the coat. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. I went over. And I had the same interview with the same director, and I knew I didn't get it. I, I didn't get the job. And I walked, uh, I walked out with a coat over my arm, and there were uh, some men around the the, the um, faucet, you know, the water stand, whatever you call the it. The water bubble. <laughs> now it's, I don't think anybody does it anymore. They all have bottles. But, <laughs> but, but, but they were, and they made remarks, and I, you know, just smiled and kept walking. And then one of them detached himself from the group and came over and took my arm. And he said, you don't mind, do you? He said, they didn't think I'd do this. And I said, that's okay. I didn't care. You know, at the time, I was, I, I didn't matter. I was thinking about not getting the job. And we got to the elevator, and I went in, and he put his foot in the door. And he said, were you in to see the Carson Show uh, casting? I said, yes. He said, did you get the job? I said, no. <laughs> no. He, and he just put his finger up. And the next thing I know, my agent called and said, I did get the job. Wow. But after that, I did um, I did six of them, I believe, after that. They kept calling me. And I did receive a an apology from the director, which was so sweet and so fun. I, I just was shocked. He said, I am so sorry, Barbara. He said, I, I fell into that trap that people do, that if, if you need someone to play a dumb blonde, you get a dumb blonde. If you need someone who can't sing, you get one who can't sing. And he said, you were so intelligent, and you, uh, little did he know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but, but you could sing. So you, I just thought that was not for you. Uh, but I did. You know, I'm very dumb. I can play dumb blonde. Well, that's. I think you play the smart blonde, and you know I won't say dumb, but not well educated. How's that? That's that's politically <laughs> okay. correct today. All right, <laughs> all right, but it, but it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. And now, who was that guy that had the pull? You know, I can't remember his name, but I knew him later. He was a friend of Sidney Sheldon's. Yes, very the, famous. Who did Genie? Right. And he was. Uh, God, I can't think of his name. It'll come to me. That's okay. And, and of course, you know, Johnny Carson. And then I'm looking at this, the list of other shows that you had appearances in. And I'm going to pick the ones out that I really liked and the shows that I watched, if you don't mind. Like, I Love Lucy. I was trying oh. to find that episode that you were in for I Love Lucy. Oh, you couldn't find it? I couldn't, but you can you can point me in the right direction. Well, I'll I'll get someone who can okay, point perfect. you. I, I don't really know how to do that. Okay. How to, how to get it, you know. But that was that was the third job I had in Hollywood was with Lucy and my goodness she was so good to me she really was um I think I've, I've told this story a lot of times about the fact that <clears throat> I had a a dress one of my <laughs> sexy dresses on for the uh, show and uh and she uh, when we were rehearsing I you know I was all business I just did my part I didn't socialize with Desi or anybody and uh, um, she said Barbara come here and I thought oh boy this is something I did something wrong you know and she said do you like that dress and I said it's fine it's fine I wasn't going to say anything <laughs> was wrong you know I was yeah. so happy to be there she said take it off Ooh, so I took it off I put the robe on you know that you wear and gave it to her Bless her heart. She sat there with her assistant and bedazzled it. You know, put that those things that they can. Uh, it looks like a. I don't know. Sequence. A sequence. Snap them on. Yeah, they're sequins, but they just snap them on. They're uh, they're not sequins actually. They're they're dazzling little lights of crystal. Gotcha. And and she did the whole dress. <laughs> and I. And then afterwards, she she did want to to uh, 
uh, wanted me to sign with her. She was getting a group of comedians uh, for her. You know, at that time, they owned a studio. And uh, she was, and I, I, I was so sorry I wasn't able to do that with her. That very day, I had tested at Fox, and uh, they picked up the uh, option. So I couldn't go with Lucy, but I surely did want to. <laughs> I bet, I bet. To, to me, maybe the greatest woman entertainer of all time, Lucille Ball. And, com- and comedian. Yes, as yeah. well. Wonderful yeah. comic uh, timing. And my mother was a huge fan of, of uh, Lucille Ball before she ever did that. And so I was, I was very aware of her talent, and she could do wonderfully straight parts. She wasn't just Lucy, you know. No, and the fact that you got to work with her is pretty incredible. You did the Perry Mason show. You mm-hmm. did uh, other shows uh, throughout the years as well. And the one that uh, kind of really stuck out with me was a movie that you played co-star with the king of rock and roll. Elvis Presley, <laughs> Flaming Star. Oh, Elvis. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. He was just the, the nicest, most gentlemanly actor I have ever worked with. Help me really. out here. Did you sing? I thought you've had some singing roles in that song, uh, in that movie. But no, it had no music None. at all. Wow. He was, he, it was a, uh, it got good reviews, the best reviews Elvis ever got. He played a half-breed who died and didn't <laughs> sing. And, wow. uh, yeah, and it was a good, good film, but his fans didn't like it. They they wanted a song. Of course they do. So they added, they brought us all back after they'd released the movie, and they added a scene of me kind of hopping around the, <laughs> silly, the uh, kitchen table, and he's playing the guitar. You know, I, I think I was <laughs> supposed to have been dancing, but in boots and stuff, you, just, you know, that doesn't really... Cut it. Makes it a little he, difficult, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he sang and he played his guitar and I jumped. I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely pull that one out of the archives. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> now, we fast forward from there, and then it's I Dream of Jeannie, one of the most iconic TV sitcoms, comedy sitcoms of all time. It ranks up there with the very best. You're there with Larry Hagman and the rest of the crew. It was a special time for you. It was. It was. It was more than special. I had my baby while I was on that show. The very first, uh, you know, we did the pilot. And uh, the day that it was sold, my doctor called and said, you're pregnant. You did it. (laughs) Because Michael and Sarah, who I was married to at that time, uh, Cochise, if you know that. Uh, But at at any rate, he, um, uh, the doctor... We, we, we've been trying to have a baby. We really wanted to have a child. And, and um, so I was thrilled. I was just thrilled. And I called Sidney Sheldon. I said, Sidney, I have to talk to you. And he said, uh, can't you tell me on the phone? I said, no, I have to see you in person. I have to talk to you. I have something to tell you. I was so tickled. And he said, well, well, well I'm, uh, I'm at Buck Henry. Buck Henry is a writer. And uh, he said, I'm at his house. Uh, why don't you come over here? He gave me the address, and it wasn't too far from where I lived. And I, I drove over, and we went into Buck's office, and Sidney sat down, and as a joke, he said, you're pregnant. And I said, yes, I am, <laughs> and I, I'm afraid I can't do your show. Oh. You know, I was so, you know, and he said, what? Like that. I said, I, I, I just got the notice today, and I had to tell you so you could replace me. <laughs> wow. and, and he was flabbergasted. He said, now, wait, wait, wait. You're getting ahead of yourself? He said, let's, let's think about this. I'll think about this, and I'll get back to you. And, boy, did he think about it. God love him. He, um, the first 13 shows, I was pregnant, and I looked like a walking tent. I had a lot of <laughs> scarves. Going wow. on there with the, with the little pointy hat on the top, you know. But bless his heart, he did, and I was able to do it, and I was thrilled. I was so thrilled. I bet that, uh, it all worked out. Yeah, and yeah. and folks, just so you know, in case you just tuned in to Gary Levin and Friends here on Wednesday night, 
we have the very beautiful Barbara Eden. We're talking about her days in the TV show, I Dream of Jeannie, with Larry Hagman and the rest of the crew. You know, the the show itself had so many so many different plot lines. However, each and every plot line was delivered magnificently by the actors. I look at even Dr. Bellow's wife, who was a beautiful woman herself. In fact, she was very, very pretty. But then, oh, yeah. then we put Barbara Eden next to her, and she's not as pretty. <laughs> That's just truth be told. If you if you weren't in the room with her, people would say, "Wow, she's hot." Well, she didn't have pink panties on. <laughs> you know that 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 does a lot. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, uh, <laughs> we're we're envisioning that as you said. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's and, important. <laughs> it certainly is. Now, the the chemistry that you and Larry Hagman had, it seemed like it was more than just the TV husband and wife thing or the TV master and genie thing. Oh, it was. He He's, uh, I would say, one of the best and maybe the best actor I've ever worked with, uh, only because we were on the same wavelength, we the same rhythms. We understood each other immediately. Even if, even if he went off script, you know, I was able to respond to him and talk, um, just like we were two people talking. It was never, never, quote unquote, acting with him. I loved it. The uh, the crew that you did get to work with, and of course, I, a lot of people forget who uh, your master of masters was was Haji, right? <laughs> Haji, <laughs> yeah. Well, the blue gin. Yes, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was played by my husband, Michael Ansara, by See, the way. I thought that might be the case. That's why I mentioned it. I wasn't sure, so yeah. I, I had I had to dig a little bit. Hopefully, you didn't get mad at me on that one. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. That, and Major Healy and, and Dr. Bellows and the rest of the crew. Oh. And, and, and just last week, we actually spoke with Butch Patrick. And Butch Patrick was in one of the episodes oh. of I Dream a Genie. He he played my son, didn't he? Yes, and as a matter of fact, yeah. he, here's the deal: he sent me a picture of you oh. and him together, but all grown up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah 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 yeah. That was, that was the last year of Jeannie, actually. Yes, it was cool. Yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so you got I Dream of Jeannie, and all the things do you do, and then you keep reuniting with Larry Hagman. Every 15, 20 years for different shows and different episodes. It's almost like one of those boxers that keeps coming back. He doesn't want to give up on his career. But the reuniting with you and Larry Hagman in so many different ways. And and the, the funny one that I think out of them all was in Dallas when you come in as the billionaire. Yeah. Harris. And, and, and the, I got him good. Yes, you got him good. But at the very last episode. This is one of the best things in all of TV. I always look for those little hooks. At the very end of that particular episode, you reveal to him that your maiden name was Nelson. Was Nelson, yes. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) Did you come up with that one? I want to know. No, of course not. That was a writer. No, 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 no. I don't do things like that. But uh, the funny thing, the very first scene I did when I guested on his show was come out of an elevator and I had a, a, a pink suit, the same color as my, my uh, genie outfit. And when the thing opened and I walked out, he said, Oh, I can't do this. Look what, look what, look what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. We had to do that two or three times because he kept laughing and, you know, getting out of character. <laughs> oh, that is that is awesome. Now, yeah. I, I want to go back just a little bit if we can. I didn't want to really go out of order, but uh, I got a lot of texts this week and questions that our listeners wanted me to actually ask of you. And the whole okay. whole blinking thing, did you kind of patent that thing or did you come up with all the moves or were you being taught by someone else? It almost seemed like you came up with it on your own. Well, it was a 50-50. Okay. Gene Nelson directed the first... 13 shows, and it was his idea to blink. Um, but I felt the blink wasn't enough. You know, just blinking your eyes, nobody really sees that. So uh, as we 
filmed, I nodded my ponytail and uh, blinked. I, I, I remember exactly how it happened, and I just saw that over and over again. I said, that is not something that was pretty much scripted. This is definitely the actress having creative freedom. Yeah, I thought it was more powerful than just a blink. Oh, it certainly was. And and I know for a fact that there's probably a million and one guys out there, even as we speak, even as we speak, and I'm talking all ages, that wouldn't mind spending a day inside the bottle with Bob Eden. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know I don't cook. <laughs> There's a problem there. <laughs> oh, who, who wants to eat? Come on, Barbara. Who wants to eat? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, dear. Folks, just in case you're a little confused tuning in, seeing what we're doing here this evening, we are speaking with one of the greatest actresses that Hollywood has ever seen and one of the most beautiful actresses that Hollywood's seen. I'd have to put her, you know, in no certain order. I, I don't do orders, but if you were going to take a top five, She's definitely in there. And like I said, no certain order. You could be one one day or two the next. You know how it works, Barbara. And it's just been an ongoing thing. And the fact that on my social media page, when we promoted you being on this show, you doubled anybody else. And we've had some heavy hitters from Hollywood, professional sports, music, so on. It just goes on and on. And Barbara Eden's at the top of the mountain. Gary? My mother would love you. <laughs> she would love you. <laughs> is, she, is she available? <laughs> oh, no, I wish she was. <laughs> One of the things I know that you did audition for, and I know I'm picking and choosing, and people are saying, how does this guy, Gary, know so much about her career? Just because I know you had the opportunity to work with so many different people, or at least audition with them. One of my all-time favorite singers was Andy Williams. How far did that audition get? I don't know whether you got the role or not, but I know that you did something oh, with him. Yes, I, I, he was doing, he was uh, cast, I believe. Or was it his audition? I think it was his audition film. And I was under contract at Fox. So um, I wasn't auditioning for the part. It was for Andy, you see. And he did get it. He did get the part. But it was uh, State Fair. That's it. Some film done it yeah yeah wow. and uh he was wonderful we at the time we, we went out my little house that had a little pool <laughs> then and uh worked on our lines um it, it was uh he, he was darling and then later i i appeared on his uh his show you know his musical show on television and that was nice that was great i bet i love andy williams he was a great singer so, oh, what a voice. Now, if I were to take all the actors that you worked with for guys, okay, I was going to say, out of them all, as far as being the most romantic and looking in their eyes, because in some of the roles you had to, I'm going to say at the top of that list is Don Knotts. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. I, I, Actually, believe it or not, Don Knotts is here with us in spirit as we speak. He is. Aww. Hold on a sec. I think we can get Don. Can you say something to Barbara while she's still there on the phone? <laughs> well, how you doing there, Barb? It's your old friend, Barney Fife, by way of Don Knotts. How you doing? I got my bullet here in my pocket. That's just for you. <laughs> well, I'm, just, I'm just fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so then I know you did that whole play with, with Don and you traveled with him. It, it's just so cool. Mm -hmm. All the things that you've done as an actress, whether it was the iconic roles that you performed in or the people that you were in the different movies, the, the plays, everything that you have done has been followed by your fans by the, the people that are in the industry, you're top notch. I don't I've never ever in all the years that I followed your career have ever seen a negative. It's all positive. Well I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure there are a couple out there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You'd be hard pressed to find them. Well Barbara, I want to thank you again very much for coming on Gary Lovett and Friends. We really appreciate it. And my blink did fail, but I'm going to try one more time. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, try I'm many, trying. many, many times. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Wow, she's here. I can't believe. 
<laughs> Barbara, thank you again for coming on. You were awesome. Oh, you truly were. Well, this is so much fun. Thank you for having me. All right. What a good time. You take <laughs> care. You are a beautiful woman, and you always 